temperatures into the triple digits. We have it's had very, triple very digits for weeks now. It is very hot in Alkenstar. There was there was a break of like three days where it was in the 90s, and we're like, man, this is nice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of. Come on, hero point. Who knows the name of this? All guns, no glory. The Outlaws of Alkenstar podcast. There for you Pathfinder go. Second Edition. Oh, but you know the the hero points all reset last game. So oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> everyone gets one hero point, and if you have more, they go just to one. Sorry. <clears throat> Hey, I've been meaner to other players on other shows, so don't feel bad. Been meaner well, to players on this show. It, true. But not usually you, Superstar. <laughs> Let's pick on you. Um, you guys were successful. Were victorious. Were, you beat up a bunch of kegs. <laughs> Beer fats that came to life. You know. Um, Shorny standing on the bar and while you guys are healing and all that stuff fades and you guys start getting back together for that you know next room she just starts spacing out like she'll look at you if you hey 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 kind of thing and, and nod that she's okay or whatever but she just seems to be that internet constantly buffering for the connection she's just looking around and looking up and and mouthing something about port forwarding and and just just sort of you know present for the moment so assuming our oracle is a little bit, uh, shall we say, tag along baggage and out of commission, what do the rest of you guys want to do? We had a little bit of a heal and appeal. <laughs> Healing, successful, appealing to my better nature as a GM, unsuccessful. What do you want to uh, do? As part of that, will I have the 10 minutes needed to remove the, the unstable condition from my weapon? Sure. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Yep. You guys still stink to high heaven. So... <clears throat> we're going to we also uh, found that whiskey as well at the end of the last one too yeah Vashon like appraised it said you guys could get 10 solid gold piece and Troy and Joe were talking about how it's too bulk I'm assuming it's going to go into the the bag of holding yeah Okay. Yeah, it's the unopened whiskey jugs are in my, my bag of holding that I happen to have on hand still that we still haven't gotten the corpse smell out of but we're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys want to do? I mean, there's a door there. That is true. I'll Rochambeau you gentlemen for who opens that door. Oh, I know who's going to open the door. I know exactly who's going to open that door, but now he's confused because a certain player came to me and said, hey, I'm a cleric. I'm going to strike like a fighter because we have an oracle, but now I debunked our oracle and now Eric is very, very confused. So what do you do, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do I, when you don't have the oracle to be your cleric and that what <laughs> i will still uh uh raise my shield uh hammer at the ready and open the door once once the party's ready yeah i think you guys have had enough time you've all healed and everything unless uh pilo charwin have any buff spells or something that are long lasting or any other concerns before we break the seal on the room gentlemen Oh, don't break the seal. Uh, I just might want to move to the south slightly, so I might be able to see through the doors all. Over here talking about breaking the seal and we're in a bar. Yeah, that's that was pun intended. I mean, I'm surprised no one took any beer from the, the keg monsters myself. Even it if it was, was bad, it's still beer. Nasty. Okay. It is the sourest of mash. There are sour know, beers. Somebody likes that. that. Charwin's replaces watermelon with a broken keg with beer spilling out of it. You're just carrying it along. <laughs> is, that, is that what's happening? It's a watermelon beer hat keg now. <laughs> it's a, what is it, emotional support pet thing? <laughs> those, <laughs> those, you know. That's my little buddy. Emotional yeah. support. Oh, speaking of your little buddy, who's now got his hands on his little leafy hips looking at you like, who is she? Um, 
he's back. You ran off to get him, and now he's back in your back. So the My door. God, if he was there all along. A crack. We crack open the door, and I love it. In the video, there literally is a tiny crack of light spilling across the map. <laughs> Aha! Well, Mo moveth your mini. Oh, fortieth party. We have Atticus. It's not Atticus. Um, oh, it is Atticus now. Oh, okay. Now we're crowding. Each there you go. Now I can move. I can hey, move. Sorry. He's in. He's in. Yep. They're in. Okay. So, hallway to the left, straight, or this room. Where are we going, Vashon? Where are we looking? Okay. Um, should we just form up, like spill into the room, fan out a little bit? It's a large room, so you guys don't worry, you have room. Get in there. <clears throat> just worried about uh, st where we step. Yeah, worry about where we step. All of us shoot daggers at Vashon. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Yeah>. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> this enormous room features smooth stone floors covered with dust and a catwalk 10 feet high leading around the south and west walls of the room. Giant covered vats and metal containers fill the space. A five foot high platform leads to four of the vats on the western side of the room. There are various exits as Eric said, as, um, sorry, Eric. Andreas. Andreas. Yeah, Atticus Andreas. I was, yeah. At, as Atticus, as Andreas said, as soon as you step through the door, there is a little hallway going immediately north with a little door on it. But we're, we're kind of convinced of this whole, wow, the east wall goes flying like way many squares with a, with a door on it. And to the south, such a huge room. So just to give a, a width and breadth of this room, let me zoom out. Okay. Um, kitty corner. Get it? Catwalks, kitty corner. Atticus, no? Okay, fine. Um, from our door, we're looking at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. Good 12 kitty corner squares. Massively open room that goes 10, 20, 30 to a door, 40, 50 to another door, 55 to double doors on the back east wall, and straight down. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet to a wall. But a mere 15 feet from Charwin is a platform going up to those catwalks overlooking those four vats. And there are side platforms. There actually is a stairwell right beside Charwin that goes up even taller all the way around the back wall looking down. So picture Joker over the vat. You know, feet level are at the top of the vat. That is the outer rim catwalk. Picture the guy that goes up like a ladder and is in front of the vat at the top. That is that little tiny catwalk stair thing that's right below you to the south. See? Yes? Okay. So Floors. like the, the, the big rim one around is so they can access the, I guess, the taps at the top. Mm -hmm. Where the one over here on the left side that is a little lower is more like an observational platform. Yeah, checking gauges and whatnot. Yeah. Also, I'm assuming the upper is how they fill them. Mm. They would roll barrels and then like fill them from up top or, yeah. Anyway, this is a closed brewery, brewery, so there's probably a lot of gear and equipment that's just gone, missing, right? They would probably take anything. Like, this is Alkenstar, where you recycle metal like there's no tomorrow. So anything that's left is either been overlooked and has value, or is this too big and cumbersome to really be worth moving for what you might, you know what I mean? So the catwalk stays, the vat stays, you know, guys step into a big room. Gatabee pulls out the proverbial, you know, light source, like a little lantern-y kind of thing. Clips it on his belt and spills light into a dark room. And he's, and he's just standing there looking around and he's making little finger motions like, where did I put that thing I came for? You know, like that's just, um, uh, hmm. I will remember you guys, you know, just, uh, hmm. Uh, Mr. Gatterby, was that um, the thing you came for uh, magical in any way? Hmm. Are you kidding me? We're looking for a cold room, right? Fan out. It's been a long time. Um, 
Um, I'm not sure what you're trying to say, man. I'm just going to go. I'm going to cast a tech magic. Okay. All right. I guess we just start clearing one by one. We clean. You want y'all want to clear this little uh, hallway here, just next to us. I think that's. Uh, I think that's prudent. Gaddy B wanders out to the very center of the room and just starts looking at doors and puzzling. Like, was I facing this way? Did me and the dwarf do it up on that catwalk? What was? What did put the cold? Um, you know. So he's he's nearby, right? Um, <sighs> Shuni has come down off the bar and doesn't enter the room. She's just standing in the doorway, kind of half crouched, peering in with interest, like a little kid, but doesn't enter the room. She's kind of looking around. So she's there, like she's observing, but doesn't actually enter the room. So you mentioned the door at the top here. You guys want to have at it? That is yes, I think so. party objective one at the moment, right? Okay, so one moment. I'm just going to zoom in here. All right, open the door. But no, rattle, 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 rattle. It is locked. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Um, I can I can take a look at that. See if I can jimmy that lock open. Well, doesn't Mister Gatterby have a key for it? Maybe ask him first. Spoil is fun. <laughs> Honestly, I just don't want to deal with him right now. Pilot, um, would you like to go ask him about a key while well, the cat's having his go? I mean, simultaneous motions. You, know, you guys don't have to stand for one. It'll be more of a distraction more than uh, asking for a key. Kind of just so he doesn't, just in case he gets pissed off that we're doing that. Um. So Please. is it a thievery to attempt to open the door? Yes, sir. Uh, three in the tower, consecutive, if I like what I see. Oh, actually, they don't have to be in the tower because... It's an open, you know, there's an obvious DC, right? Okay, well, I rolled Oh, no, sorry. No, it's fine. No, you're right. They're in the tower. Okay. Because if I say, if you roll like 30 and I say no, then you either know, it, you know, it kind of gives it up. So anyway, uh, Pilo, do you actually go over to him or are you just calling out to him? No, I'm going to go over to him. Okay. I'm just to start talking to him about keys. Yeah, hey, you got keys to all these doors in this place. There's lots and lots of play. We're going to we're, we're gonna look everywhere. It's going to take a long time to pick all these locks. Okay. Um, he uh, reaches in his belt and starts going through them, looking at them. He's got a couple. He's just going to go, this is the door. And, 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 and we're stalling as we look at the cat's rolls. And Okay, <laughs> so you, you're fidgeting. Unsuccess, and don't seem to get anywhere. This thing's old and kind of rusted. <clears throat> Have another go. Use a heavier tool. Still not having it. Dig in. You now, try maybe try a different way about going about it. And you get this thing to move a little bit, so you're on your way. Uh, you go over to Gatterby. You start talking to him about this and that, and he starts inspecting his keys. So you mean like? Something like this one, or, or, you know, he's asking the skeleton about, you know. Anyway, what are the rest of you doing? Well, you guys, well, these two are about to unleash whatever's in that room, or Gadaby's anger <laughs> on the skeleton. What are the rest of you guys doing? You just stand in post guard, or? Um, I'll be inspecting the vats, as I am suspecting that they could be the new enemies in this room. I mean, if kegs can be an enemy, maybe big vats of beer could be an enemy. Dude, if those things are the enemy, there are, just for the audience's perspective, okay, there are four large size, four square along the west wall and four on the south wall. You guys, like, two medium machines put you on your butts. You want to get attacked and, and poke and wake up the bear of eight that are all large size? I'm not poking them. I'm just watching them suspiciously. Okay, uh, craft check would probably, um, you want to come out and have, like, eyes on all of them? Just move out a bit? Um, uh, I, can, I can move near the center and, uh, just kind of... Oh, I, I don't need you to purposely, just technically you can't see every vat from your position, so I do, would need you to move at least a couple squares to get all paranoid. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, look at that, we're playing Connect Four with players. Pretty <laughs> sneaky, Jeff. <laughs> Um, Charwin's getting paranoid. Andreas, almost said Eric. Sorry, Andreas. 
<laughs> what are you doing? Waiting, just waiting for um, Atticus to finish picking the lock. Yeah, watching his back. Okay. Yep. Um, where are we here? Atticus. Yeah. Uh, you. There's that almost almost got it. Okay. I got it going. I know what I need to do. And then you need to like try again and it, it's, it sits or sets. You know what I mean? I need three consecutive, right? Uh, you got two and it's like, eh. so we still, I need some more rolls from you, sir. How many? Uh, I need keep going. Cause I need them consecutive. So, it's like you, you, you're getting somewhere, you're getting somewhere, and then it like sticks, or you slip. You know, like you slip the, the key, the, the the pick, and it bugger it comes back. Okay, that's good. One more round. Um, anyway, uh, Vashon isn't willing to give up the keys, but yeah, I can come over and, you know, see if any of them will work if you want. She gave me the keys. I'm not trusting you with the keys. Like, you don't even have, you barely have pockets. We could have put them in like. Swallow the, the, the right through you. With the keys. Where am I? Where am I gonna put them? I can't steal them. You can see everything on me. Yes, the, I, okay. I will go over and see if these work. Excuse me. Oh yeah, come on over here with me. By the time he gets back, Cat's got the door open. Hmm. Well, I'll three rounds of dicking around. Charwin, can I have some crafting in the tower? Uh, I think I already put one in the tower. You want another one? Uh, yeah, because you'd want to look at each. I mean, it's like, okay, these ones look all the same. That looks all the same. But if you want to, like, lean in going, well, this one's about to rip its moorings and, you know, attack only Joe. Then, Does that uh, one have eyes? I don't know. <laughs> they, uh, so far, you don't see any hoses, telltale signs, timer. Okay, they got gauges on them. Hmm. Indecisive. But I can tell you that you don't think so at the moment. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. A little suspicious, but they don't uh, look. Like, they don't look like they could move. They don't seem to have anything that they could actually prop up, unless something's li- they, like they're literally sitting over something under them. You know, like a platform raises out from under them, and they they scissor up on legs or something, crap, and you're like, oh shit, right? They don't seem to have the same kind of like, oh, there's hoses and available equipment that it just suddenly animates on its own to drag us around and attack you. So that's good news. But without closer, can look at him. Inspection. I look up and say, "Hey, man, um, you're you're looking at these things like there's something spooky gonna happen, and, and uh, I'm not kind of liking that a lot. Is everything okay?" The skeleton's freaked out. That's funny. Uh, I I think everything's okay, but keep your eyes open. Anything could be alive here. Oh man, okay. Well, I'll, I'll be here with you, man. But if I need, can you hold me? For I'm, I'm, I don't like scary stuff, man. Did you say hold me? <laughs> maybe, maybe just don't don't judge, man. It's just a little scared. No, no, no judge it. No, well, one hand for my good. one hand for my weapon, one hand for your hand. That's fine, I guess. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> it's so weird. The dummy account is as the players. Nothing calling players dummies can't see the cat. Uh, well, I can't see anything anymore. Yeah, I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, like we don't see you. You're in stealth mode or something. What's going on? It's wild. Oh, is he just? He's in my shadow, I think. I'm I'm in front of the door. Yeah. The screen darked but, out, and then it. But I I should I usually can anyway. It's fine. Um, I'm I'm trying to show the audience the um. The room, you know. Uh, there you go. Okay, I guess without Gaddy be moving around. I thought it was so clever, like Gabby comes back in time to shine the light for the video. I mean, in time to check, and, you know, okay. Anyway, uh, the door is unlocked. Do you wish to open it, sir? Uh, I will actually step to the side and let Andreas... There you go. But I'll have my rifle pulled just in case. I'll... Yep. You know, typical breach clear. You got it. Andreas, you're up. So open the uh, open the door. Same thing. Okay. Shield first. With a melodramatic, hammer ready. Melodramatic creak. Pushing the door open slowly with his hammer. The storage area. Oh, it's a storage area. Is stuffed with empty barrels, steel buckets, crates, 
and more crates of glass bottles, racks of dusty stemware, and tables covered in tap, siphon, stirrers, and other brewing equipment. We could build an army. Look at this stuff. Uh, looks like nothing but spare parts. I, I, I hate to cut the tension real quick, but like I just like in my view, I only see what the light shows, and I just saw a pile of skitter across the bottom of my view. It's just <laughs> <laughs> do the side shuffle. Yeah. Does, any, does anyone wish to enter this room, or are we just gonna move on? Did you just say spare parts? Yeah. I did. Mean, yeah. Uh, okay. Cat's gone for a while. He's lost to us. We. <laughs> He'll be in there a while. What are you guys doing? We'll wait for him to finish. I think. Oh, you know, fun. Fine. Um, uh. No, nah, smart. You know, just let him rummage around while we're all being paranoid. Uh, sterling artesian tools for brewing and potion crafting, but they are made of sterling. Now, sterling as in top notch or sterling as in silver has yet to be determined, but it is on treasure. It's in the storage room and you find it. Uh, is it added to the party sheet? Yes. Sir. Yes. Yeah, cool. Now, that's one room, 20 minutes. It's a tiny room. I gave you, knocked it down to like 510 kind of thing just to be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I threw the perception myself. Unt. Because if I say, give me a perception roll, it just seems like bogus. Everybody come, floods the room all trying, trying to give perceptions or not. You know. Ends up breaking in this room. Yeah, something like that, eh? So, um, but yeah, I, with that, I'll step back out into the hallway and join the rest of the party. Okay. Found some fancy uh, cooking supplies. Yeah. Uh, hasn't been yet. Keep your eye on it. All right, never mind. Um, so yeah, a little bit of treasure never hurt anyone. I mean, at least the treasure right. follows a theme, right? You don't, you're not killing Diablo rats that suddenly drop potions for no good reason. It drives me crazy. <laughs> I mean, those things eat anything. I know, but still. Um, all right, so I guess we'll check this next door. Okay, so working your way along the north wall, it looks like. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is locked as well. Uh, should, should I should I try and open this lock, or does anybody happen to have a key for it? Uh he comes over. Excuse me. And you are excused. Wastes three rounds that you might have used to get the door open. Going this one, rattle rattle. No, this one, rattle 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 rattle. Uh, this one. No, wait, wait, wait. You see him like start. He keeps missing half the key, going back to. Well, well that, this one. Try this one. I did that one. That was the first one I did. No, that, that's the one you move past to do this third one. Try this. This is the one that I did. Don't tell me what I did and did do. Anyway, then he's, he's and then he just grabs like he quietly palms it and flips the keys and like goes for the one you told him to. Uh -huh. This one. This one. Maybe this one. No. Uh, this one? No. Should I? Should should I? Should I try my 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 tools? Well, sure. Why didn't you do it in the first place instead of bothering? Well, because if you got a key. Well, obviously I don't. Well, we didn't. He rattles that, the did keys you? at you. <laughs> Silly. I'm going over here to light up the map for the for the audience. Excuse me. What? <laughs> I didn't know that man spoke celestial. Um. Oh, that, now see, that was good. Get it? God's uh, meta. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's very good. It's not heroic, uh, <laughs> but it's good. But it's Spe to the point. Speaking um, of hero points, I do have a gift for this cast. Something I've been uh, playtesting with the other cast, and we like it, so I'm, I'm migrating it to this cast. When you spend a hero point, I will draw for you a hero point card that you get to bank. And you can use it any time. Now, these were supposed to be used instead of hero points, but we find them to be so random that you could pull something and waste a hero point on, like, and your spell does this. And it's like, I don't have any spells. Too bad. Yeah. There goes your hero point, right? So you get your hero point, you spend your hero point, you get your reroll on the spot, and then you pull a card and you get to bank it. A lot of these cards you can actually give to players or say, here's an effect you can use on that guy that I see. 
I mean, we just had Ryan Messina give resistance acid 10 to the orc paladin and it's play at any time. Very cool stuff in here and sometimes very mundane. There's even stuff going, do a reroll. But if they both fail your check, <gasps> you're doomed one. But it's like, yeah, but considering you spent a hero point and did a reroll in the past for free, and I gave you a hero point card that could do something like it again, it's all good. It's all gravy. And we're going to try and start using them in these shows as well. So, Sounds fun. Yeah. Because no one ever seems to do anything technically heroic. And I, I have to stop giving out hero points for jokes. Cause <laughs> we're, we're outlaws. They do outlaw things. That's right. Well, heroic outlaw. <laughs> anyway, um, give me those these rolls. In the tower? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let you do them openly for 10 Okay, well, I did the first one. It failed, but 11. Uh, I well, need... He does that. Maybe I'll move behind him. Okay, why well, what stop? That is yep. a crit, that's a crit fail. Did that is. Break a tool. <sighs> Tell me I'm wrong. Look up thievery. Look up picking a lock. DC was 20. I feel like I either break a tool or break the lock. You you break the tool, and I think it... There's replacement tools or something you can buy. So if you don't have replacement you tools... You can repair the tool, I think. Potentially. <laughs> Time goes by. What is he doing? <laughs> oh, these two look this stuff up for me. Pilo and Atticus. Well, those two delve into the rules and look up their skills and, and make help me make some rulings. What are you guys doing? Because time is now rapidly dissolving into the ether. Checking at what's down this hallway here. I guess kind of walk over down the room and... Sure. Um, on the east wall below the double doors is a 10 foot wide hallway, kind of an exit. And it actually leads to more doors. A double set of doors halfway down on the north side and a double set of doors halfway down on the south side, as you will see here on the map that I am expanding upon. What do you think of that? So I'm just going to kind of yell out, Hey guys, there's, um, there's some more doors over this way too. If, uh, we need, we need more things to explore once, once all these other doors are open. Uh, why did you stop holding my hand? <laughs> it's like it was Char like Char that. that walked away. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, I just looked it up. The two options are either to replace the picks if you have the replacement picks, which I do, or do a repair check as part of the craft skill, which is a ten minute thing. So um, I I do have like ten sets of. Oh yeah, someone already pulled them. Uh, ten sets of replacement picks, so I'll just expend one one set of replacement picks to repair my t my toolkit. Okay. Now, to be exceptionally nice, what if we bank that roll? Give me the roll, and later when you have ten minutes, we'll say it's done, and then you don't have to expend anything. You're going to use the replacement picks now, yes. But if you can fix your original set, they go into the replacement pile. You don't have to expend I see what anything. You're All right. So, the, give me a pending future ten minute free roll. No. No. Okay. So, expended. Right. I still want to borrow you for 10 minutes in the future. Eric, please make a note in the campaign notes. Joe was be 10 minutes. Uh, but, uh, you know, because we won't forget it later. Anyway, new picks, new tries. Give me 20 in the open. Three consecutive 20s. That's a 25. Yeah. It's clear, clear, clear. Barber trick. That's not a success. So, starting over. Nope. That's a twenty. I like how they make them consecutive now, because it's natural like, twenty. Well, like for sooner or later. Oh, that's a crit. That counts as two. So that so, should mean three yep, yep. consecutively. Yep. Awesome. I, I really like the new lock picking system. It's kind of neat. Yep. Because otherwise, somebody going, well, oh, can I just take ten minutes? DM, give me. I'm gonna roll it sooner or later it's like yeah but now you do three in a row which could be a lot of it kind of literally looks like fiddling in my head like he's fiddling with it he's almost got it and then ah oh, damn fiddle 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 you know so yep. I think th I think that's very very cool I'd like to do that with a lot of skill checks um so voila control deleting the door and I will step to the side once I know it's unlocked okay okay so same routine yep Come forth, opens a door. 
Come forth with your hammer. Smashing the door. Peeks inside. What do you see? This small... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, appears to be a an empty room with uh, some tables. A table and a bench and uh, three barrels. Barrels? <laughs> Jumps yeah. in. The small workspace features a table with benches, like you said, to the east side of the room. Along the north wall, desk covered with various bottles, beakers, flasks, and alchemical tools. <clears throat> alchemical tools. Now that he runs in, faces a boarded up window. The west side of the room contains several iron banded wooden barrels. A large wasp's nest near the northwestern cor- corner hums violently. And I would like... Yikes. Yep. I would like you to, just to be annoying, uh, press the perception slash initiative button on the front of your character there, uh, Andreas. Now, he did not say quietly, but after three doors and literally no one talking, everyone holding their breath and waiting for the whatever, I'd ask for stealth roll. But Andreas immediately turned around and went, there's, 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 this is the room. And I'd love to reward him for that role play. But it kind of kills the silence. So I feel bad. I really do. Because I would like everyone to roll perception initiative, please. Oh, heck yes. Oh, my roll there, Joe. I just think it's it's funny that I think I have the lowest actual initiative in the party, and I rolled the highest because of just the <laughs> dice. Because of just the dice? Yeah, Charwin got a two on the dice for a ten. Okay. Do Sherney. Uh, and I'll I'll go, go ahead. Eleven, yeah. 11 on the dice for a 19. Okay. Andreas, 12 for an 18. Okay. Atticus rolled a 19 for a total of 22. Okay. The insect swarm with a 25 auto rolled by said uh, said beast. Said us. Where's Vashon? See? Bugs. <laughs> Thanks, there. old man. Um, goes first. So he turns around he sees everything, and the cylindrical barrel, 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 wasp nest. He's like, it's all like you're, you're literally just in those moments, describe beginning to describe the room, and then you realize you hear the humming and you see it, and it's like, ah, crap. And they see you. So, starting with the humming swarm, I will burn an action just to perceive you. Because just because, you know, oh, they open the door and come running. Over, you know what I mean? They're doing B stuff. They're doing wasp stuff. They're like, do, 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 do. Someone not locked us, locked us into this room, obviously, unless they have another exit. I never knew that was a door. I thought it was a wall. We're buzzing away. We're doing our stuff. With a 22, I'm going to enact the freebie. I see you in 60 feet range. But I think it's still fair to burn the creature's action. Does this make sense? Especially so if just having, swarm. Yeah, yeah, but, but also just like, not just have something like, oh, see you for free and come running. I think that that initial huh? count says two seconds, you know, an action. Yeah, With actually, my, they're, uh, my DC to perceive me is 12, so they got a critical. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to lower that DC because you were talking and opening a door. <laughs> I drop it uh, to 10, one for each, right? Uh, all, st- of them, all of them start talking like Sherlock Holmes from the Robert Downey Jr. movie. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to run right over here and just engulf our dwarf. <laughs> That's me. So I'm going to scream. <laughs> um, we do area damage as we engulf. So basically the deal is, is we come over and now we've done this before and forgive me um yes sorry okay so as an action we see 
as an action, we move. And as our final action, the cost an action, we do a swarming sting, or swarming stings, plural. Each enemy within the swarm space takes 2d8 piercing damage versus a basic reflex save, Andreas. Okay. Uh, reflex save, here we go. Andreas. Oh, natural 20 oh, for natural 26. 20. You get, you Beautiful. get... Beautiful. You get stung. Nice. You get stung. Um, saving is for half. Critting is for none. And you are not exposed to wasp venom. So they come at you. And we hear all that, the really tiny, like, ting, 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 ting on his metal armor and his shield. Ting, 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 ting. Right? Ah! <laughs> Which brings us immediately to uh, Atticus, who's screaming like a little it's, girl. It's like they um, they literally just went for his arm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What kind of armor do you wear? Scale mail. Okay. And all oh, the mechanical arm. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Got the shield. Um, so can I, can I target a separate square of the swarm? Yeah. As long as you're targeting any square of the swarm, the swarm is affected. Okay. I, well, I want to make sure because I'm shooting through an ally, but I'm still we, hitting the we, swarm. We, yeah. We will take a shield okay. bonus, blah, blah. Right. So yeah. Um, I don't see why not. <sighs> But you fought a swarm before. Do you remember the immunities? Uh, not off the top of my head, no, because that was days ago. Um, <laughs> that was months ago. <laughs> In character, man. <laughs> I know, but it's Joe we're relying on, and Joe's not organizing. It's months, so I'm being merciful. I studied for the GRE since then, dude. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think instead I'm going to risk moving through the swarm. Um, I know there is a chance it gets its attack on me. But if it doesn't, awesome. Okay. Now, I don't want to freak you out because old guys like us go to old school. So I want you to sort of do the forget what you know. First edition, only area attacks could affect these things. That is mm-hmm. gone. Yep. And yet, and yet, they've conveniently brought it back around for a nice little bonus. So not thinking old school, would you still move through them? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a reason for this. Okay. Well, it seems I have to activate my stings on my turn with an action so you should be good you just run through them 5 Whing. 10 15 20 okay so you tell me where you're going how you're moving so i move north by andreas um one second move north through andreas in the swarm um and then east a few feet a few squares two squares um and then uh north again to end with the table separating the swarm from myself. Uh, and I am going to line a shot and fire that shield bonus. I'm, I'm, I don't roll well, and I don't want to... Uh, considering the chaos of a swarm, I don't want to accidentally shoot a comrade uh, in the heat of combat. Yeah, but you have open square, so how about me? Yeah. Uh, you got me targeted? Yep. Okay. Let me grab the dice. There you go. Thought I had it. Okay, now you're targeted. Well, I was just I was gonna drop it on. Uh, that is a sixteen with a miss. Okay, so gun goes off, and just maybe clip the odd little wing or whatever, but not, no meaty bodies of them, kind of thing. Uh, and I will spend my last action to reload. Okay, Pilo, a scream catches your attention for free oh man what's going on there and i'll just cut right around the corner here and uh, oh, oh you know that scream yeah. <laughs> it's either yay it's tools or e run away <laughs> what is it's happening a- and, uh so five i guess i can't really see much here yet 10 15 20 feet look in the room um what is my movement here hold on a sec 25 feet i guess right so Another five feet up. Okay. Um, so that's one action, right? Okay. Approaching the door uh, for free, you literally see Andreas standing through a doorway, swatting at something that's all over him. I can't give you the room like that, you know, where Atticus is or what this thing is type of thing, but it does look like he's getting swarmed by something. We saw the cockroaches. You remember that battle. So I'm not going to have you spend an action. Just don't meta that you have a perfect shot tactical of that room. Okay. But you know he's getting swarmed by something. And it is Atticus. I mean, Andreas. What? What? 
Uh, let's try to see what else I can do. I don't know much I can do right now. Um, Recall. Actually, take the perception for maybe point out something that's going on. Yeah, I'll missed. do. A, I'll do a perception check on it. Just okay. to recall knowledge on any kind of. Uh, what would do you have? Be? Nature. Be nature. I don't think we're supernatural wasps. I think we're I'm an actual. It, but I can try it. Okay. Yeah, do that. Sure. Uh, Seventeen. That is a decent role for untrained wasps. Are very territorial. They will defend their territory. It's not just the nest. They will pick a space. You know what I mean? But once you invade that space, it's not like if you step out of it, they leave you alone because you're at the edge of their territory. They will pursue you relentlessly until you leave, till they cannot engage or till, you know what I mean? Okay, so. so. So it's like once you've entered the field of battle, they will move the field of battle to you. It's it's just a creature reaction thing. If we close the door on them, no. No, we're down two party members. It's acceptable losses, yeah. That's no, the oh, sorry. Back I, it and close the door. And- <laughs> Yeah, they're a creature. They're an animal. If you if we ran for it, then yeah. Assuming they don't get out. But they're not going to open the door. They're wasps. Now I've said too much. Yeah. Any, okay. any, any other action? They might be able to squeeze under it, though. That's, that, that's all I can do right now. Okay. Andreas of the mighty arm of the not-so-stung. Andreas the unstung. I like that. That sounds good. I... Um, Hmm. Well, I'll do what I do best. I will SWAT. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm only starting the battle music now because that that gunshot was. Uh... I did give us all tinnitus. <laughs> Mop. You, you did what? Is Mop. <laughs> okay. E- yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude. And- Andreas, you're all targeted up. Or would you want to target the cat? Because that's just a bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one action to swing, one action to raise my shield, and another action to try and make myself as big as possible to try and prevent things from getting passed out of the room. Okay. Give me uh, athletics as that last action. Big as possible. It's a physical thing you're trying to do. Okay. And thus yeah. craft. I use myself as material to craft a door. I am the door. <laughs> you could use an action to actually close the door behind you. That would technically... <laughs> just saying. I know it traps you in there, but it does do what you want to do most efficiently. Uh, no, because I want to be able to let on, uh, Atticus out if need be. Okay. Let Cat out. Got it. Yeah. I'm going to want right back in. <laughs> okay, now see that's worth a hero point. <laughs> yeah. No hesitation, perfect timing. I'll give you a hero point for that one. I will. Thank you. Well, I, not every joke, but yeah, that. Well, was, no, but I, I appreciate the recognition of that, that one. That was really good. So swing with the hammer first. Yes, please. Uh, so rolled an eleven for an eighteen, which hits. Swatting because, through, you know. Whoosh. Causing uh, eight points of damage. And they actually take... You see it? One point. One point. As you bat them through the air and connect, they, you know, they're flying around, they buffer or whatever. So you do kind of get that smacky smack, but it's not... It's almost like you're pushing them around, not hitting something that's standing. And they seem to have... Do the math. Seven bludgeoning resistance at least you did something and then I did the athletics in the tower I actually wanted that at the open it's okay 17 can I like reveal his role mm, reveal you no, I guess not he has 17 he puffs up with the shield okay and that's you that's me Charwin what do you want to do Oh, th- these aren't the nice kind of bees that pollinate and stuff. Let's hose them. <laughs> w- with some acid splash. Uh, okay. Let's see, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It is an attack roll, so I think uh, Andreas is in the way, so it's a negative one, right? Yes. 
Uh, wait a minute. You're doing you're doing something splash damage. Yes, it's acid splash. Can you read the spell? Is it a ray? Is it just like a little like the little fireball bead that goes weep and then ignites uh, into something? Or you know, you splash a glob of acid that splatters creatures and objects alike, making a spell attack. Okay, so you're kind of lobbing something. So yeah, he does get the plus. Yeah, just make sure you have a little negative one. Your modifier openly, and it'll do the math yep. for us. Oh, two on the dice. Ooh. But that still got you nine. That's not a critical fail. So, woof. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll spend a hero point to try to reroll that. All right. There we go. Uh, Sorry, Drew man. I envisioned this vote. I apologize. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. Again. Ooh, 17 on the dice for 24. Nice. Uh, so it takes 1d6 acid damage. Mm-hmm. So 3 on the dice. And then... Let's see, what was the acid splash? Uh, da, da, da. If you hit, you deal 1d6 plus 1 splash damage. So, okay. Oh, I can do that too. There we go. Okay. Notice something pop up with that one point. Oh yeah, there, there's the extra damage. Nice. Yeah, we have a weakness to actual splash damage. So the glob goes in and as it solidifies or as it stays in one piece, hits something and does three points. But it splashes everywhere, spreading out, and that's an area of effect which we have a weakness splash damage of five two and his one point actually does six uh and then i'm supposed to do one splash damage to uh andreas as well yep so i'll do that there you go terribly sorry andreas but he knows the risks absolutely (laughs) um and then i think for my final action i'll actually back up mm, 10 feet okay uh, we're a little focused on the battle to know what Shirney's doing, so I will come back around. And then we got Gadaby. Anyway. Yeah. Do we want Gadaby to help? No, probably just get himself hurt. I was thinking more like he's posted on the door. Find the hole. <laughs> get you guys hurt. Also, yes. <laughs> yeah, but you really want me to drop a bomb in there? <laughs> All right. Yeah, aren't there flasks or something in there? Maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> I didn't bring my tools. I, you know, like we just, he, he grabbed his lizard and, and we kind of ran for it, right? So you guys are the protection. I'm, he's not really armed or anything. Um, so anyway buzzing uh oh no you know he's gonna he's gonna keep his distance but stay close so the audience can see with the light and that brings us around to the swarm uh we're getting splashed through the doorway we don't like this and we move away from the doorway and hover straight over and cover up mr cat hello mr cat was my father Sorry. The pussy get. Enemy stings. Can I have a reflex save DC 21, sir? Maybe. Please. That's a 26. That is not a crit, but it is good enough for half damage. You take 2d8 in half. So I'll give you half back. Sorry. So That's you fine. Take, so, so the 11 actually only becomes five. You are in, so- injected with wasp poison, which I believe has an instant um, onset. Can I have a fortitude save? Good now, Lord. I'm sure I would be corrected where it's like, well, technically it happens on your turn because it affected you or whatever, but let's say for the sake of, yeah. My turn is next anyway. That's a natural 20. 
for 26. Oh, you are good. I believe saving against the poison effect. 26? Yeah, I believe that might cancel it. Unless it doesn't make you immune for later, but it definitely should cancel this one if I'm not incorrect. Which brings us to more stabbing. I have an action left. Jerk. Sorry. It's we fine. hover we hover and stab the crap out of you. I, I get it. They, they're full of resentment. Yep. More reflex. I will get, let you have this reflex at plus five. Makes sense. Right? Because, sure. Well, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like a second attack, and I can't do a negative five on an effect, but I could certainly give the bonus to you, so make, your plus, make your plus five. You know. It's... Um, That's a 21. Now, again... I might be correct in the future saying this type of creature can only make one attack around, but it gave it as a single action. So I'm assuming if I can hover long enough, right? I'm under the impression you can just do it as much as possible unless the ability says otherwise. True. I still like the fact that I kind of did the negative me by giving plus to, plus to you so that we're all fairs and squares. Mm. You save, you take half damage. Half of six is three, sir. And I will crank you three more. So your five becomes eight. And that's us one more fortitude. You did technically. Oh, hang on a second. I'm just wondering if, if you, if you save against the damage, do you skip the venom? I think you I... may have to fail. I assume if you get hit, and if you get hurt, you get, get hurt. ejected. Yeah, it, it should hurt. say on the thing, on the the, th the the description, if if save, then no damage or no poison or something. It just says basic twenty one reflex save and is exposed to wasp venom. So yeah, I guess it is a oh, successful. Okay, yeah, a successful save negates the poison exposure. Okay. Okay. So does that mean I didn't get any poison exposure? Right, because you saved last time as well. Okay. Now, I mean, I, I saved on the poison, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't so, say anything with a crit save. Because you, you did crit on the first one, right? Crit save would have been like 31 or 36. Because well, the, D, the DCs are 21. So he's he'd be looking for a 31 for a crit. Oh, you mean but the natural, natural 20? 20, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, um, if it was like a level two, he dropped down twice. That'd be the critical success. Right. Yeah, but well, the, since I, he was poisoned one, it doesn't matter. No, I don't think I was poisoned at all. There's, I, there's, yeah, there's, sorry, no, there's nothing never to, got to one. There's nothing to buff that extra mark, though. It's not like now right. he's suddenly immune or, oh, I'm for the second hit, I'm immune. No. Anyway, but at least we don't have to waste time of fortitude saves as long as you're making the reflex save, so we know that. Um, Huzzah. But no, good to work out. I don't mind yeah. hearing, you know, the speculation, right? Um... Which brings us to your actual turn. All right, so I'm going to... I can't seem to grab myself. There I am. I'm going to step out of the swarm, of course. Uh, I am going to aim my gun at the swarm and use my explosion ability. Okay. The swarm is clear of all targets. Uh, let me find my ability real quick so I can double check my explosion and make sure I do it correctly. Explode! Kaboom! And da, 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 da. it takes all. It takes both of my actions to activate it. So, um, explosion deals two d six fire damage with a basic reflex save to all creatures in a five foot emanation around you. So it's going to get struck by this. I guess technically in two squares. I don't know how that works with this, uh, but it's. I, I have a weakness to splash, and I have a weakness to area damage. So because I'm one swarm hitting two squares or one square or all four squares, that's kind of redundant. It's just yeah, it's a type of incoming. So that's just going to make it area damage, correct? Exactly. Okay. Um, it does get a basic reflex saving throw. Um, and I believe my DC is 18. We'll push buttons and we'll see what we can get out of you. Well, they get, they do the reflex save against me. Okay. Here comes. Um, that will pass. 27. Almost a crit. That is almost a crit. Um, See, Troy, that almost crit. <laughs> 28. Sorry. I'm trying to find my, my 
class DC real quick because I always lose this crap. Um, so half damage? Uh, it will probably be half damage, yes. Yeah, but it, it should still inflict the area weakness of five no matter what. Right. I mean, look what Buddy did with one point. <laughs> That's too bad. That's just piss poor fire damage um, of three. Okay, so I will make this thing take eight. Three from you and five from the weakness. Well, technically, oh, is it cut in half after the weakness is applied? From the reflex save. Oh, I see. Yeah, sorry. So half a three is one. So it would only six. be six. Yeah. That's fine. I still something. I appreciate um, your honesty. No, I'm getting hurt. And then it. I need to roll my d20 to see if my weapon jam not jams, but if the uh, unstable effects. Sure. Uh, I believe it actually doesn't with that. Let me look up. It's it's it, you can move on, but yeah. this will let me use it again if I can. <laughs> yeah, I believe you're looking for a 15 pilot. What do you want to do? Time for pilot to work his magic. Save the day. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm not really afraid of bees because what are they going to do to me? But get in there. I want to know what fantasy grounds <laughs> does to a skeleton. Get in there. Let's find out. Um, I guess I can just kind of run in there and just stand in the bees and cast chill touch. Are you immune to poisons? I am resistant. Oh, so. Okay. You know, you just I, want I to stand I in there. I'm, I'm a skeleton. I think I'm immune. I don't see now. See now that th- I would th- think. this. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying you're guaranteed a hero point, but if you actually ran into the swarm casting cold hands to swat at them. Yeah. We're get, that's see that's this is what I'm thinking is heroic. Now you got to have a good end game. Like you got to like, and he goes in there and risks it all, and you killed them. I would give you a point right there. If you just get in there and do some damage and acting silly, then it was heroic-ish. But he's saying like, because they keep saying, guys, you're not doing heroic stuff. You're not doing heroic stuff. If he pulls this off, that would be heroic. If he could kill them right now by running into them with a cold spell, because you know what I'm saying. Some might argue this like, well, he's resistant. It's not very heroic. It's not like the halfling ran in there. But anyway, I'll take what I can get your outlaws. The cat did. The cat did. <laughs> the cat did too. The yeah. cat immediately ran out. You ran through them. You didn't run into them. It's a difference. A very distinct difference. <laughs> anyway. It's because I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm just... <laughs> I'm an idiot. idiot points. Look at him rack those up. I'd like to spend those I'm, on... I'm a skeleton. What are the... What? What does a skeleton think is going to happen to him in a swarm of bees? <laughs> There's nothing to sting. <laughs> you know what we do have so, that I, I'm worried that's to say? My, that's my thought process for it. <laughs> um, Drew and Corey are high-level patrons and can give patron points to shows that they are not in. And I recently asked Drew, what do you want to do? And he's like, Age of Ashes, help the players. Star Wars, they're overpowered, help the bad guys. And I'm like, all right. How long have you been this patron? I didn't notice. He's like, since December. I'm like, oh crap, I owe eight points, right? So um, we don't, we don't, because these guys aren't paid to play. They're cast members that are generously donating their time to me and some of their money to help pay the bills, keep the lights on. And at the higher tiers to have them stand out from the regular cast that are also helping at lower amounts. I'm letting them have the audience, you know, the patron points as long as they don't do anything weird with them or you can't use them in a show that you're in that's just that's cheating okay Corey is no longer in this show but i've had him affect the other ones so i'm just saying there is a few patron points if you guys run out of hero points or you know you guys are really down on your luck i just ask that you use them like when things really 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 go sideways like repetitively that's when you raise your hand and ask for a patron point and We'll spend one of Corey's, but I got to make you aware that they're there. They are available in those special, special fancy gowns, rolls, hate me kind of instances. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Did the audience get all that? Probably not. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Pilo running in, uh, running in there. Uh, Arms flailing. Uh, get right uh, in there. I guess I can get right into that square there. Yep. And then yeah, just, it, you get into the corner and then they have clear, like they're not hurting you to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll get right to the corner there. And then, then they have open shots at the edges, right? I'll cast a uh, chill touch. Sweet. Let's target 
ourselves a swarm. There you go. And cast away. It's funny because the swarm is four hovering wasps in a pog. And on the battle tractor, it looks like pie. So it's like Pilo has pie, Andres has pie, and Charwin has pie. <laughs> I don't know if they did six damage or if they're supposed to take half damage. Um, okay. We successfully saved against your chill d tight damage of a spell and six points, but we actually took all six. Interesting. Read me the spell and I'll look at their, maybe they're special. Maybe we don't the like spell deals. The spell deals negative damage equal to 1d4 plus your spell casting modifier. The target attempts a basic fortitude save but it's also enfeebled one for one round on a critical failure. Okay, so the saving throw is just for the enfeebled. You do the damage straight up. I don't take half damage. That sounds like, I know it's worded ass backwards, but I think you do your damage. The fort saves in there for the enfeeblement. Unless you're telling me if you read this, you've, you've edited your reading and it's, it's literally is only half. I just the, the target attempts a basic fortitude save, but is also enfeebled one on a critical failure. Oh, on a crit I failure. It, yeah, oh, yeah, so that should be half. Huh. Well, I'm looking at my... I'm looking at my immunities and, and weaknesses and stuff, and there's nothing in here about elements. There's no hot, cold, fire, blah. I'm curious why it did that. Hmm. You know what? I don't know. As much as I want to go... Oh, sorry, blah, fancy ground's broken. Only do three. I'm going to give it to you. Because you've been, well, I can't say you've been a really good sport about all those times I like made you not do damage, <laughs> rolling around in the fire and everything. But I feel I owe Pilo. You know, last couple times I ruled against Pilo. This time I'm going to rule for Pilo. Let's let's even out karma a bit, shall we? And I'll, I'll give you a six. I mean, a swarm of bees, uh, they'll do what they must in the next turn. So You're okay. making them sluggish with your cold. I'll give you that. Why not? <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, how many actions to cast that? Two. Uh, two actions. Yep. Andrea, stout beard, you're up. Charwin, get ready on deck. Andreas. Um. Come on, man, you got we'll, this. We'll swing at. Uh, <laughs> we'll swing at them. It's the best I got. You got this, man. Okay. Yeah. So same idea. Uh, swing and then just try to occupy as much bulk as possible to try and keep them in the room. Lock the door. I'll make yeah. you big. Look at this big. He's filling the door. Oh, That's yeah. Right. Oh, wow. I'm <laughs> just kidding. You rubbed swing. me the right way there. Uh, swing, swing, swing. There we go. Whoops. Come on. Oh, boy. That's not so good. Rolled an 8 for a 14. You've only used two actions. You want to roll again with negatives? Yeah, I will roll it. Okay. Again. Go Take again. a swing again. Or do you want to use your hero point? No, no. I'll use my second attack. Uh, okay. Uh, no better. So uh, roll 11 for a 14. And then right. use my last action to kind of swell up. Okay. Charwin. While we're going from Eric, I would like you to make a note for me, please, Eric. To Charwin. Charwin, you spent hero point, did you not? Yes, I did. I have drawn your hero point card. Would you like to hear it? Oh, yeah. Last second sidestep. Play this when you are targeted by a ranged strike. The strike automatically misses. Something has to shoot at you, but I'll let you hang on to this. Nice. But I'm using the same cards for the other show, so I'll get Eric to write that down as you as well. Make a little note of that, if you please. So I got last second sidestep, but not what it did, sorry. Oh, uh, when he's targeted by a ranged attack, it'll automatically miss, but it has to be ranged attack. One range attack will miss if he plays this card. I will urge him to use it in the firing squad so like at least one guy doesn't shoot him and, and he might survive. <laughs> Charwin, what do you want to do? Uh, I think I'll try to see the swarm by going up 5, 10, 15, and then off to the left. Sure. So you post up on the door where Vashon was. You're shooting through cover and through a dude and I believe standard lesser cover is plus two uh, was it two or one I 
that? Right. Clumsy light. Nope. This was a uh, Lesser is plus one. Standard is plus two. Okay. So one for Andreas, one for the cover. So give me a negative two for whatever you're going to do, please, unless it does not relevant. Uh, yeah, I think I'll do Acid Splash again. So we'll do a negative two. Okay. Which square would you like to target? Um, well, I, I guess you kind of have to hit the first one of the first two. Uh, like you don't have height to like get it over. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. If you want to hit a back square, it would be negative three because you're literally going through something that's shielding itself. I know it sounds like a dick move, but it would give you the advantage of placement. So if you hit the front two squares, negative two. If you want to hit one of the back squares for whatever reason, I'd say it would be a negative three as it shields um, itself. Yeah, I'll go for the square in front of Andreas. Uh, okay. I have no idea where Atticus is, so he's at the top. To he's, at, he's at the top. You can actually see Atticus. It's Pilo you can't see. Uh, on my screen, I can see Pilo, but I can't see Atticus. Really? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anyway, for those, a quick snapshot at home. The door opens into a rectangle room that goes two squares right, three squares left. And as soon as you step in, right off your right uh, kneecap is a picnic table of a table. And the swarm has come all the way down into this corner, drops south. It's got Pilo pinned in the doorway. It's... Andreas, and at the top of the table in the top right corner of the room, stepping out of the bees or wasps, is Atticus. Now we have Charwin coming to the doorway, stepping west and looking from an angle into the room to the right and targeting with a. Uh, so I got a hit with 14 on the dice for a total of 20. I got a 6 on my dice. And then I did 1 damage to both the swarm, Andreas, and Pilo. Nicely done. The swarm is, I don't say breaking up, but it's getting more aggravated. It seems to be, there seems to be a lot less of them, put that way. Like maybe only a quarter of what was originally there. A lot of them are sluggish and have broken, burned wings and you're doing very well. Uh, and that's me. Bernie's still doing her thing. Gadaby is like, uh, what are you doing? Get out of there. Just get out here. I, he posts up over here. I'll close the door for you. Just just get out of there. I don't, it's, it's not a cold room. You know, we don't need to be in there. Do not engage. Disengage. Yeah, I did something. I gave orders. Insect swarm itself. Uh, again, the acid splash, not liking that and just instinctively trying to move away from said splash and trying to, well, unfortunately, move towards something aggressive. It follows the cat around the room trying to escape the acid splash. Sorry, dude. I'm soft. I'm soft. I get it. Okay. Can I have a reflex? One at par, one at plus five. Then we'll worry about poisons. Par is 19. That is a fail. You're actually going to take the 12 points of damage. That was miserable. And get another one at plus five. <sighs> That's a fail as well. I have never seen a player so up and two to eight plus venom. But I'm uh, I'm going to use so down. Yeah. I'm going to use a. Uh, a hero point to re-roll that save. The second one? Yes. Okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. That's a 21. Okay. So 13 and a half only would have been uh, six. It said ignored nine. What did you, did you catch what you had? A uh, four, so if, yeah, so it, it's not actually going to help. <laughs> okay. However, it will keep you from taking two fortitude saves. Otherwise, you would have to make two right now. Right. Twenty-two for the first fortitude save. That's fine. You don't need the, the only. One. Yeah. Okay. Now, when <coughs> dropped by an opponent, your initiative actually shifts to directly before it and you're fine for the round we don't normally before i was like going to you it's like oh you go down give me a dying check no it actually flips to the monster uh, uh, before the monster and you're good no dying effects until it comes all the way around initiative 
because you got put down on the monster's turn. You don't have to suffer dying effect for a full round. And the best way they can calculate that is literally all the way around just before the monster goes a second time. So it actually shifts your initiative. Neat, huh? Very much so. Pilo. You got this, Pilo. I believe in you, Pilo. I'm afraid it'll be three weeks before you get to pay Pilo again, Pilo, so do something magical. No, I was going to say, I thought the insects went to go again. I was like, uh oh, I'm in trouble. No. Um, oh, oh so, by the way, also we're also moving away from the cold effect. Sorry, I was making a big deal about Charwin. Where we were, we were getting hit by acid and cold. We move. Yeah. But we're an animal. We don't just like run away barking and hiding. They're aggressive. They're kind of a, yeah. They're kind of crazy. So uh, noticing that he run, that, that the, the bees kind of run towards where things are going and that Atticus has fallen down, he'd be like, oh, Jeez, I'll run over here and make some loud noises and scream. One, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and then I will. Uh, let me see where it is here. Fifteen foot cone. So I, how can I cast it here to not hit Atticus? Uh, okay. So if you want to, let's start you in the corner again. Yeah. Right. If you um, come along the south wall, go through Andreas, right? Move right to the top, squeeze in here, and then just try to shoot it like diagonally out. Okay. You know what I mean? The cone, yeah. uh, I will draw for you. If we start it here, hopefully it will do like this. Mwah. Right? Yeah. Hitting it, not them. Uh, it's a 15 foot cone. Yeah. Well, it'll double back from the wall. Okay and might actually get a little like it might actually hit the wall and curl back on them um but that's no it's not going to do anything else it's not going to do extra damage or anything no well what what is the cone of sorry it's just it's just haunting him so oh okay, okay. so it's not an element that's going to curl up no, the walls no, no, no. no it's just, it's just gonna yeah. do some okay. sonic damage to them yep so okay. if you sc scooting around okay so we'll go over that way and then uh yep kind of start screaming at the bees and hey guys over here and make some loud kind of buzzing noises at them and now normally it would be up to a player to like hit and miss and oh you should have stepped here but i know that troy is can't really see what's going on because i've got minis covering minis you know what i mean and it's his go-to spell so i don't have any problem audience helping him tactically going this is where you want to stand for the effect you want to achieve and there he goes and uh so So uh, it looks like half damage. 19. We say we're not music lovers. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little freaked out, but meh. So two damage to them. So you know I'd have that one. So I'm still inclined to let you keep that cold fortitude. Okay. Any Mark. answer? That's it. That's all my actions. Andreas. Uh, we'll move to cover Atticus and cast Stabilize. Okay. You get adjacent to him? Yeah. Okay. There's some heroism going on. Risking his life, stamping in the swarm. Okay. You run to him, you cast Stabilize. Yeah, so he no longer has a dying condition. He's still unconscious, but he's no longer dying. Okay. Uh, how many actions is that? Uh, that's uh, all three actions. One to move, two to cast. Okay. And you don't need hands free for this. It doesn't matter that there's a, a shield and a hammer in hand. You're just like praying and stuff. Yes. Okay. Uh, two actions imply a somatic component. Um, and I think I think somatic they cancel. Yeah. yeah. And I think they mean like as long as you're not restrained. They've gotten rid of the whole, I carry a staff, but I'm waving the other hand. Like, I think they got rid of all that hand stuff. It's just long, as long as the guy isn't like tied up and restrained, he's good to go. So, which is kind of neat because you could just kind of do circles with your hammer. It's, I, I think it's kind of an, I think it's cool. You, you could do something with it thematically as opposed to just going, well, that doesn't make sense. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. considering the hammer is his goddess's sacred weapon too. Yes. Speaking of the goddess, second mind. <laughs> Rye, please protect my friend from Norgorber's grasp. 
I, I really, oh, I really oh. love that you you held out on the F. Like you weren't sure if we were friends. Uh, yeah, no, I was trying to let him get the guys. I like how we got a yeah. second deity squeezed in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if yeah. Norgorber uh, is actually like. Obviously, it's like death and keep him away from the other side. But does Bry have any? Um, they always have the deities, and they talk about the deities have like. Oh, by the way, they get along with these two, and they hate those four. Like the. Uh, it would make sense for Bride and not like Nagorber because he he loves secrets and keeping stuff close to the chest, and she loves sharing innovation and these and advancement and stuff. And he be uh, he would greedily hoard that stuff. Now, are they actually enemies? No, probably not directly. But it would make sense that she'd be like, "Man, that guy sucks." So who's death? Who am I thinking of? Gazrath? The well, okay, Phrasma so is like your typical death. Oh, right, sorry, but okay. she's like the okay death. People like Phrasma. Um, there's um, oh crap, I can't remember her name either. The Pallid Princess is her nickname. Uh, um, it's a stretch, but there's um, oh, Ogrethoa as Pallid, Princess. yeah, that's it. And there's also Achakek, who's the god of assassins. Um, you know, they say dead men tell, tell no tales. Right, keep him from keeping secrets. Well, as long as he's up and talking, he can share the truth. But if he's dead, he'll never t he'll keep every secret to his grave. So it's like get yep. up. I like that. Not a hero point worth like that, but that was very worthy. Thank you, Eric. I I called this on. I gotta say, not to constantly compare casts or whatever, just more fun moments. Uh, Doug's playing a paladin of, um, I want to say Kazakim, Kyrgyz. An orc paladin nice. of Kyrgyz. The strong and man. Every time we go to play, he fills our chat. Hail Kyrgyz, hail Kyrgyz, all this stuff, right? We're playing, he actually calls upon his god, lays on hands, doesn't say anything. I'm like, come on, man. Call on it. Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear the thing. You know, say my name. He goes, fine, Jeff. Well, I'll take it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. Fuck, Jeff. Jeff, I want to heal him. Are you happy now? <laughs> yeah. He got mad. All right, fine. I'll take that. Andreas, are you done? Yes, that is it. Okay. Charwin. Oh, I can't see the bad battlefield too well uh, anymore, so I want to move into the door and move to the west. Okay. Ten feet. Vashon will fill the door, but it's more for like so the audience can see what you guys are doing. I swear to God, if he's just cheering on the swarm. <laughs> <laughs> Just closes the door. He's mixing, you guys got this. He's mixing something rapidly. You're expecting a bomb, but at the end, it's just like beet ointment for your wounds. Oh, damn it. Okay. So I think in this situation, I do not want to hit my downed friend or hit all three of them. And you do not have it's, it's a splash, man. Like it's, you will literally cancel. Yeah. So what do you want? Yeah. Do? So I want to target the area south of the swarm. So that only the splash hits the swarm and Andreas. Oh, okay. Um, if I may, if I may, you can yep. target this square where Vashon is, and it, since it splashes every direction, you'll catch the corner of it doing the. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so right in front of the doorway. Again, tactical ki kindness. That is true. I'm, I, I, I told I, you. I was I'm thinking only Bastion. Gonna... Yeah, he's not really there. So. I told you I was only going to be mean to Joe tonight, not the rest of you. Extra nice to Troy. Uh, <laughs> do I have to roll an attack roll to hit that square? No. Um, okay. So what you want to do is let me kill your target, right? Attack nothing. Go ahead. Just attack with it, right? Yep. Ah, so you attack. Right? Now I'm going to target the swarm and just do your splash. Oh, and no. Here we go. Oh no! Okay, another big splash, another big sizzle. These things are like really, really, really starting to hurt. I don't want to steal your thunder with Shuni. Fashion is too fun for him to be almost helpful, which brings us to Atticus, who is stable, but still asleep. I'm assuming. Oh yeah, very unconscious. Okay. Yes. Um, but you're still in the swarm. Well, I can't not be at this point. Yes. Well, unfortunately, he did not have enough actions to get you out of the swarm, and now it is the swarm's go. And the swarm will attack both you and the, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you throw shit at a hornet's nest, they come and get it. 
And after getting consecutive shots from one side, I think they, these stupid animals have finally figured out the source. And to not just stick it to Eric's foolish actions, and though he could not kill them or pull you to safety, earning him a hero point, I will lend him the favor of Bray thus far that these hornets turn on Charwin, because he's expendable. All right, get ready, Char. Bree has blessed Eric's metal to make it unfavorable to the wasps. You would seem so. He prays to Bree and the wasps scatter. Isn't that interesting? Or maybe I just got a hard on for Drew and Charwin. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> make a saving throw there, Drew. Uh, which one am I doing? Reflex first. Uh, got a 21. That is a save. You will take half of this, which is nine. So I'm going to round it down to four. So where are you? Charwin, 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 Charwin. Uh, it, it did the, it did the 11, but anyway, uh, I'm going to take five off, dropping you to six. No, five. Crap. You had two, right? Yes. You had two points. I just did four or six. Yeah. Four. Okay. That'll no, be all right. Uh, and one for the free perceive, so he's out of actions, which brings us to Pilo. All right, so we got Atticus behind me, unconscious. Bees attacking Charwin. Oh, let me see here what I've got. I do have an elixir of life that I could go over and uh... help the bees. I mean wasps. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> he splash damage. He starts throwing elixir life at them for area effect. They heal up. Whoops. <laughs> I have an elixir of life as well, but I saved that for myself. Um, oh, dude, that would be cool. You set it on fire and use it like a bomb. <laughs> you couldn't, um, but I know an alchemist that could. See, now this is a way I would let you use Vashon. You'd be like, here, do something with this. You're supplying the equipment. He has the skill. He does something. Poof. As opposed to him just happen to have fire bombs in his pocket. You know what I'm saying? So he's not completely useless. Nah, I'm gonna help my friend. Troy <laughs> <laughs> never likes my ideas. Stop stealing my glory with your NPCs, damn it! <laughs> what do you want to do? Yeah, I'll hop over the table here and hey, buddy, you better her. Oh man, and pull, pull out my pocket. My, uh, I guess I don't know how much is it an action to give him the the potion or two actions or. I th think it's only an action. Oh, to apply? That's like a full round thing. But he's going to have to pull it out, pull it out, move, and apply. Yeah, manipulate, blah, blah, blah. Is, uh, interact is the is one action. Manipulate. Is one action, yeah. interact is another action, and then I guess. Oh, anyway, like uh, we'll just say like you, you do it, you apply, you'll give him the, the, the healing. It's kind of cheese to go, while well, I'm casting a spell, or while, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Give me athletics to hop up on the table, or acrobatics for choice. The DC is very easy, but still. Worst things have happened. <laughs> hey, buddy. And he runs oh, and drops the potion as he's opening it. 13. 13. You're fine. Hops up there. Okay. Cat is down on the ground unconscious. And you're up on a table. Technically still adjacent, though he is prone. You could also just hand it to Andreas. Here, give it to him. And then you get to do something really cool. Now, there's something you could do really quickly. Get up there, pull up the potion, give it to Andreas, and then you're free to do your next thing as opposed to be hunkering down on top of the cat. You know what I mean? No, I'll give it to And I'll just do it with that and give Andreas the full round. He probably has more of a chance of getting okay. something done. We I'll looked this up. I know there is something about applying a potion with a roll. There's a roll involved. I just can't remember what it is. Just what, the roll for what the, what the what the healing would be? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at rolls for administering. Okay, well, let, let's give him the good news. Roll, what is the D6 potion you got here? Um, 1D6 plus 1. Okay, you can roll. Pilo, it's your fault. I mean, it's your potion. I'll roll I'll roll the, the dice and then... Uh, okay. There's the, well, he's probably going to get an M. So nice. Six, so seven. seven. Yeah, maximum healing. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so it looks like it's the same action whether you're consuming it or feeding it to another person. The only stipulations on feeding it to another person is you can only feed an elixir to a creature within reach that is either willing or unable to prevent you from doing so. Yeah, it's, a, it's an adjacent movement time burning thing. It's not a roll. Okay. Yeah. I, but I know there was something. 
And it's it is it is an action to do it, but there's nothing fancy other than that. No, it's fine. Um, he could pull it and drink it, and by those rules, he could pull it and give it to you. Plus yep. his movement, so he's all good. No, what was screwing me up is they took the time to like blot that out, and because I knew there's a description, I, I got tied up in my head thinking, oh, there's something going on, but no, it's all actions, no rules. Uh, so you're all good, Pilo. And yeah, seven. <clears throat> uh, you could dramatically wake up on your turn. Uh, Andreas, yeah. Andreas. Stop sailing, but now who's stealing your thunder, Pilo? Andreas, what do you want to do? We will do a one action heal uh, to buffer Atticus a bit more. Yeah. Uh, he is accident prone. I mean, I don't know who gets beat up more in this party. So he's the only, rumor has it, he's the only one that survived like the last party slaughter. Just saying. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. All, sur- all surviving members like left his company because he's some kind Look, of Look, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a kind of a tabby uh. here. I'm not. I'm not one of those cal- those calicos or those Bombay cats, okay? I'm not actually bad luck. Oh, okay. Can I have a squeaky prayer to brief for that crappy one you just... <laughs> <laughs> I, it, gets, uh, it, it gets better, dude. You're casting heal, right? Yeah. Okay. Breathe by you, your grace, did, please did, did allow. You, did you say one action heal, or is this is all you're going to do? So... No, no, this was the one action, so I'm going to do the one action heal, and now I'm going to throw a hammer. And then move into position. Okay. You got Are you throwing the hammer in your hand? Or are you yeah. drawing another hammer? Drawing the hammer in my hand. What? Okay, you had a hammer in your hand. Yeah. Is this the one that's throwable or the one you wish to throw? Or are you going for a throwing hammer that's on your belt? No, no, it is a throwing hammer. It's a light hammer. I only okay. have light hammers. Okay, so if you... Okay. So, and then you wanted to throw and then move, right? Yeah. Okay, I was gonna try and bend and give it to you, but you you honestly fairly said it as a one action heal. So yeah, okay. Toss. Oh, hang on. Let me um, retarget for you. Go ahead. You have a straight line over the table. Um, you are adjacent to the cover, not it, so it does not get a cover bonus. And there's a wide open shot through two squares of said thing, so you're not gonna hurt any people or friends. So yeah, have at it. Okay. Hey, it's more just for effect, right? Just to try and disperse the cloud a little bit. Yeah, you never know. Chip away. Every point helps. Every round. Not to mention that these things turn on you. I uh, rolled a 7 for a total of 13, which is a miss. I'd say stick to clarity, but that previous roll, I'm kind of undecided. Where do you want to move? Oh, over to the door. Okay. So you come down 5, 10, 15? Yes, to please. It? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And by being extra mean to Eric, see, it's still kind of being... Joe doesn't feel so bad. He he, he died. He went down on your watch. The, the bad karma juju shifts to the guy that touched him. That was you. So now I'm going to be mean to you. No, don't uh, do that. Char- That's not Char- right. Charwin. It's, it's my world. It's lots of right in my head. Charwin. Ah, I'm sorry. I splashed you with acid. Jeez. <laughs> As a hammer whips by me. Eat this sugar cube. It's much better acid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I will move to the north west just to get out of the swarm. And then I will cast I guess another acid splash uh, kind of to the north of the swarm. So like 10 feet away from Pilo. You can hit yourself, or you can hit uh, Andreas with the splash, your choice, the top two corners, right? Well, I'm thinking if I if I hit here, then I shouldn't hit Oh, you, you right oh, I, oh, sorry, you're counting on the splash doing all that extra damage, right? Yeah, okay. I got yeah, you. Just I got the you. splash. Oh, you're adapting to the combat. That's cool. Uh, there's just too many friendlies. There we go. Here either. Got a 13 to hit the square. And then we'll attack with splashing. Targeted go. Yep. Oh, sorry. There we go. Go, and go, target. Splash. One for six. Excess is ignored. And again, not the cleric that wants to be a fighter, not the inventor that wants to be famous for gun that he fights with. 
Pilot doesn't count, he's dead. Charwin steals another kill for the party. And we will see you all next... Oh, wait a minute. You know, the coolest thing is... Watch this. Let's see what happens. And it turns into a big blood stain. <laughs> and Vashon runs in with a smoking vial. I'm ready. I'm helping. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's gone. Damn it. I was about to be so helpful. I had, I had this clinched.